Hi, welcome to KubeCon Cloud Native Con Europe 2021 virtual. Today's talk is going to be focused on Kubernetes labels everywhere, decluttering with node profile discovery. My name is Dave Kremins. I'm a cloud software architect in the network platform group at Intel. Uh, today I'm going to be joined by Connor Nolan, who's a senior engineer in the orchestration team at Intel. So for today's agenda, we're going to cover node feature discovery, um, an overview or background on NFT and the problem statement associated with it. We also have an example of um, a complex node specification. We also intend to provide a conceptual overview of node profiles. And we have orchestrated a very simple demo that highlights the, the problem and presents a possible resolution to the, to the issue. And finally, we will have um, some uh, key takeaway summaries uh, for you guys too. So before um, discussing the problem statement at hand, um, let's focus on what NFT is today. So NFT is a node feature discovery component available in Kubernetes um, that detects hardware features and advertises those features using node labels. And these particular features um, can be categorized under uh, numerous uh, specific domains, such as CPU, IO, MMU, kernel, memory, network, storage, um, PCI, system, USB, et cetera. And it's an important um, component in the Kubernetes ecosystem, given that uh, numerous different types of workloads need to ha or have, uh, need special attention, let's say, if, to uh, specific features of a platform. Um, so for instance, you know, if some a platform had um, a particular feature that was required as part of your workload, then we'd want to ensure that the workload lands on a compute node that has the, the intended feature available. Um, but again, um, e even though this helped in the the placement of workloads, um, or at least complemented the placement of workloads, it's still kind of promoted this tight coupling to individual platform capabilities. And, you know, if I drill into that, what I'm really saying is, is that your workload was very um, individual feature aware. So each feature that was required or intended to be leveraged by your workload needs to be specified upfront. And that's what I mean by that tight coupling. And when we look at this um, across numerous different types of workloads, and especially from my background, where um, it's really based in telco workloads, um, there are a lot of features required from the platform in order for a workload to run deterministically um, and with uh, the right level of performance and throughput. And when we look at what's expected um, of the platform, it can become um, a configuration nightmare very quickly. It really adds to uh, the complexity and not to mention that it becomes that bit more difficult to schedule when you have so many different requirements um, specified as part of your either workload or your pod specification. Also, you know, when we look at the discovery mechanisms, there are actually multiple ways to um, do detection and labeling. NFT is just one. There's also node labeler and there are other various components out there um, as part of the ecosystem that are um, also capable of labeling their their nodes or labeling their, their features as well and making them available. But with each offering and each component that is capable of doing that, we essentially extend the amount of features that are, um, let's say, claimable or schedulable, let's say, in Kubernetes. And we end up creating this laundry list of all these different features. And as I said, this can become unmanageable and adds extra level of complexity and you know, presents new levels of scheduling headaches. And, and the number of features continue to grow. And this is the existing pattern. You know, this is what's out there today. And you know, as uh, every couple of months, there'll be new um, feature detections added to NFT, for instance, and there'll be new node labels available. And if a workload does need a specific uh, feature capability out of a platform, it's going to be added somewhere so that it can be claimed. But again, this particular pattern uh, focuses too much on the individual features. Um, and when we do that, when we focus on individual features for a workload, we tend to uh, misalign on the abstraction layers provided by Kubernetes. 
Like Kubernetes is, um, is a stable API uh, with the right level of abstraction. Um, and you know when we look at it and compare it to that, uh, we kind of break the abstraction by tying our workloads to specific individual platform capabilities. You know, so the point of my slide here today really is to try and pivot towards a platform centric perspective, right? So no longer do I need to be concerned with all of the individual uh, feature capabilities of a particular node. Instead, I want to be able to avail of um, a platform offering. You know, holistically speaking, what can my, my nodes offer me so I can land my, my workload over there? When we look at it um, under that lens, we start to perceive it as um, kind of like an, an almost an optimized accelerator for your specific workload. An example in this case would be something like, you know, um, a power efficient, power efficient packet processing node. So when I have a, a packet processing workload, um, I don't need to be concerned with all of the individual feature items that I need for that workload. Instead, I can target a specific node because it's been configured and what's available to me from a consumer perspective is power efficient packet processing. There's a big difference, you know, and it simplifies things and so on. In my next slide, um, I wanted to, to showcase an example of a very complicated specification. Um, this is taken from a real, real world um, application. Uh, it is telco oriented, uh, but it gives you guys an idea of um, how fast uh, things can you know, become unmanageable and out of control when the, the list of feature requirements, be it for your node or your workload, continues to grow. So as I said, this is um, a realistic specification. We put it in video format because we couldn't fit it on the slide. And I think we're almost done. So as well, as evident, um, or at least as showcased by that, then I think it should be clear that, you know, there are um, a lot of opportunities for um, 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 a, a really large level of complexity within, you know, feature capability detection, um, not just with NFD, but the, the, the feature detection mechanism itself. So that was an example of how complicated a specification can become and how hard it can be to, to manage. Uh, now I'd like to hand you over to my colleague, Connor, who will take you through um, more of the presentation. Uh, so over to you, Connor, thanks. Thanks, Dave. Okay, I'm going to do a quick high-level overview of how no profile discovery works. Uh, first, by showing the flow that currently exists, and then how MPD can make life a little bit easier for the user and for the scheduler. Uh, so let's take a really simple example. Uh, so here we've got a cluster of eight nodes, and each node has a different set of features. And I want you to keep in mind the example that Dave has just shown of a node with a couple of hundred individual features uh, instead of a handful like we have here and then picture a cluster with 5,000 of those nodes instead of eight. And you quickly get an idea of how unmanageable the situation can become. Uh, so a pod is created and it's looking for a list of individual feature labels and it's using the node selector construct to ensure the scheduler gives it a node with all of these features. So if I'm the scheduler and I'm going through my filtering process, uh, I'm gonna look at this pod and the label specified and say, okay, so this pod wants ASNI crypto instruction. Uh, so node 5 doesn't have that, so that gets filtered out. This pod wants AVX 512 instruction set. Node 1 has AVX, but doesn't have AVX 512, so that's no good. Uh, this pod wants SSTBF, so speed select technology base frequency. Uh, node 7 doesn't have that. Uh, and this pod also wants layer 3 cache allocation technology, and node 8 doesn't have that. So those are all filtered out. I see this pod is also looking for a couple of custom feature labels. Uh, so let's say the cluster admin has configured some nodes in the cluster to run the single NUMA node topology manager policy, and then they've applied a label to those nodes to signify that. Uh, likewise, they've configured some nodes with ISIL CPUs and applied a label to those nodes to represent that as well. Uh, so this pod wants a node where it will be guaranteed NUMA alignment. So that rules out nodes two and four. And finally, the pod wants to run on a node configured with ISIL CPUs. So node three is no good there. Uh, so after all that, node six is the only feasible node and the scheduler moves on to the next step in its filtering process. So now instead of 
polluting our pod spec with a bunch of individual features, let's create a node profile CR. Uh, containing all the features we want to make up a profile that best suits our workload. So once the CR is created, Node Profile Discovery reacts and applies a new profile label to any nodes that fit that profile. Then when the pod is created, instead of looking for a plethora of individual features, it's now looking for one label, the label of the profile that has been tailored to optimize this particular workload. Uh, so overall, a very simple concept, but one that lends itself to a top-down approach to workload scheduling and infrastructure management. Uh, and this approach can be utilized to automate and scale the process of cluster slicing. Uh, so this is designating nodes optimized for a particular performance critical workload to run those workloads only. Uh, and this is a concept we'll elaborate more on in the demo, which I'm going to go through next. Okay, so as a proof of concept, we've built out no profile discovery as a Kubernetes operator, and it's deployed into a cluster uh, alongside NFD, and then essentially leverages the feature discovery performed by NFD to enable these uh, higher level profiles. Uh, so let's take a look at the cluster setup. So I have a four node cluster, three worker nodes and the control plane node. If I look at the pods that are running, so you can see here the NFT master is running. Uh, I've got an NFT worker on each of my worker nodes and down here we can see that the no profile discovery operator is running so this is a single pod deployment so there's no need for individual node demons or uh, for host level discovery or anything like that it's just a, a single point of contact with the Kubernetes API. Let's take a look at the labels on our worker nodes uh, so we can see up here on cube worker one uh, this is a bunch of feature labels applied by NFD. Uh, Cube Worker 2, also a host of NFD labels. And we can also see a couple of custom labels, the kind of labels we touched on earlier, uh, like a specific topology manager policy or a node configured with ISIL CPUs. And uh, Cube Worker 3, much the same um, mix of NFD labels and a couple of custom labels. Okay, so that's all pretty standard. We can take a look at a node profile spec now. This is a simple no profile CR. It's been given the name uh, high performance packet processing and in the spec are a number of desired feature labels to make up this profile. So again, like in the example we had before, we have uh, ASNI, AVX512, STBF, uh, layer three cache, ICPUs and uh, topology manager policy. Create that profile. And we can see that it exists. And I'm just going to leave the no profile spec open on the left so we have it as a reference. So now over my other screen, I'm going to check again for all my worker node labels now that the profile has been created. Uh, so what we're looking for here is a new label with the profile.node prefix. Uh, if I scroll up to cube worker one, uh, you can see that there's no change here. Uh, but on cube worker two, now we can see this new label with the profile.node prefix and the name of our high performance profile. And on cube worker three, so that's also unchanged. And at a glance, we can see that this node doesn't have the desired topology manager label, so it doesn't fit the profile. So in summary, what this means is of our three worker nodes, uh, just one of those nodes fits the criteria for our high performance profile and has those matching labels and it's given the additional uh, profile label. So what would happen if a node no longer fits a profile due to some change in its configuration? Uh, for example, let's say the sysadmin decides to disable the topology manager on cube worker two and then as a result, they then remove the topology manager label uh, like so. What we would expect is for no profile discovery to react and update the node so that it no longer matches the profile due to the change in circumstances. And if we check our node labels again, we can see that not only has the topology manager label been removed, but also our profile label has been removed because this node no longer fits the criteria for this profile. Uh, so now none of our three worker nodes fit the profile and as a result, none of them now possess the profile label. And likewise, if we were to make a change to the no profile object itself, uh, 
So for example, if I was to remove the topology manager uh, feature label from the spec and then reapply that spec, again, I'll just leave it open for reference. And now we go back and check our labels once more. We can see that now nodes two, cube worker two, and cube worker three both fit the profile and are given the label, the profile uh, high performance packet processing label, because both of these nodes now match the criteria listed over here now that the topology manager policy has been removed. Also, as an optional add on to the core functionality of basic feature aggregation, uh, we've also explored the possibility of introducing a node tainting mechanism uh, via the CRD. Uh, so I'm going to add in these additional fields into my spec. So what we're aiming to achieve here with these additional taint behavior parameters is that 50% of nodes which fit the high performance profile should be tainted with a no schedule taint. So in our small example, we have two nodes now labeled with the high performance profile. And so we're looking for one of those nodes to be tainted. Uh, but if you can picture this on a larger scale, the purpose of this is to designate specific nodes which have been optimized and configured for particular performance sensitive workloads. So essentially treating nodes themselves as accelerators and slicing your cluster accordingly uh, based on these profiles. So then workloads with requirements which match a given profile are scheduled exclusively to these designated nodes and, and those resources are not wasted on less critical workloads. So I'll update the CR once again. And this time I'm going to check the taints of my worker nodes. So we can see here there's no values for cube worker one and cube worker two. Uh, but for cube worker three, we can see that it has been tainted uh, with the high performance profile and the no schedule taint. So this is what we were expecting to see. We had two nodes labeled with the correct high performance profile, and we wanted to taint 50% of those, which is one, and that's what happened. So also I want to check the labels of the worker nodes. And now we can see, so uh, cube worker two is still the same. So it has this profile uh, label, which is true. Cube worker three still has the profile label, but you'll notice that the value has changed to tainted. Uh, so this allows workloads with tolerations to target this node specifically, as opposed to uh, non-designated nodes, which also match the profile. And this information is also reflected in our CR. So if we describe our high performance profile, we can see down here. So this is the spec with the feature labels that we specified and the taint behavior that we set and here in the status you can see so two nodes were labeled i.e two nodes match the profile and we specified we wanted 50 percent of those tainted and you can see here one of those nodes was tainted and for completeness sake let's say you wanted to scale up the number of designated nodes so let's bump this up now to 100 percent uh, so what that means is that we want to taint basically all of the nodes which match the profile. So I'll reapply that uh, CR and again, I'll check the taints. And now we can see that workers node, worker nodes two and three are both tainted. And likewise with our labels, we should see that again, value for um, our profile label has changed to tainted. And if I check my CR again, we should see that reflected in the status. So again, this is updated here. Like I said, we, we specified 100% and that's what we've been given. Uh, all nodes which match the profile are now tainted, i.e. designated for a specific uh, workload. Okay, we've seen what it is and how it works. So now let's cover why you would use no profile discovery and the advantages it can provide. Uh, so a number of advantages present themselves when we look at the compound effect of multiple features on a platform versus a single concentrated profile. So firstly, the reduced complexity in the workload scheduling process, as we've shown in the example. Uh, and then, and probably the most obvious advantage, uh, the simplification of the pod spec itself. Um, so now you can remove this sprawling laundry list of feature requirements baked into your pod spec, and instead reference a single profile, which has already been curated for your application's performance needs. Uh, move towards a top-down perspective. So what do we mean by this? Um, we want to get away from the bottom-up mindset of my app needs 
this feature, this feature, and this feature in order to fulfill a certain quality of service. Uh, instead, let's move towards a, my app needs to fulfill a certain quality of service, so what makeup or profile of features is going to achieve that for my application? Uh, and then we can align these profiles or these makeups with the abstractions that are most prevalent in today's deployments. Uh, so cluster slicing, no profile discovery naturally lends itself to a model of cluster slicing or partitioning of a cluster into groups of nodes with uh, common use cases. And the demo showed us some functionality for uh, designating nodes for specific performance critical workloads and then providing this mechanism in a lightweight and scalable way that's Kubernetes native and could potentially remove a lot of overhead for a cluster admin. Uh, so with that, I will hand back to Dave for some closing comments. Thanks for the demo, Connor. Um, so shown there, you know, we've essentially demonstrated the, the problem at hand whereby, you know, a laundry list of feature asks can get out of control, uh, whereby we can generate a profile level uh, label um, that has the, where, where the individual capabilities roll, roll into it. Um, and you know when we've done something like this to try and simplify the um, the placement models for workloads, you know what what else can we do? You know so if we do have a proliferation of uh, this type of mechanism and you know new patterns emerge based on utilizing something like this, you know there's always the question of what could we do next? Could we build on that? Um, is there another avenue of work we could look at? And, and there is so. Um, we're also looking to, you know, based on, you know, your profiles, you know, so like it, it, it's easy to have this get out of control um, and to protect, you know, the integrity of, of profiles, you know, we're looking at a, a JSON schema to, to validate and promote consistency of them, you know, and if we do, um, you know, uh, start work in that particular domain, then it's easy then to tie this into, you know, existing automation pipelines and validate um, the the creation of new profiles, right? So I'd see this as um, something that would be beneficial going forward, um, assuming that, you know, NPD was um, successful or that, you know, that the profile awareness that, that this brings to the, to the community uh, would be accepted and utilized. Um, and we've a couple of options here, right? So what, what's been demonstrated to date is, um, is kind of a, a simple Kubernetes operator that has its own custom resource and its own controller. Um, but, you know, we could take a different approach and extend NFD by providing the same capabilities um, directly into it, whereby NFD actually incorporates uh, the, the profile management and generation. That's another approach that we could look at. Uh, we've also looked at a potential integration point with NFD, whereby we build uh, two separations, um, one to uh, focus on you know, profile concerns that can then act as a complementary component to profile management. So NFD or profile concerns and the management of them could be done in one component and NFD could manage the actual, uh, the labels, uh, the profile labels themselves. And we, we've also um, seen some use cases or potential possibilities with uh, policy-based control systems, whereby, you know, a, like um, a policy system could create the profile based on its own policies. Um, and this is something that, you know, could be leveraged in Kubernetes, given that it's it's um, policy or it can be policy heavy uh, depending on your infrastructure and platform. So you could tie it directly in there um, and generate a profile based on uh, your existing policy controls. And again, then with this, then you have the option then of enforcing the profiles so that um, if a particular policy is not met or honored, then the profile is no longer valid or is invalidated based on some other action uh, from within your, your policy control. So like there are numerous um, things that we can do next with this particular approach. Um, so I, I hope you've, um, you've enjoyed today's talk. Um, it's, I wouldn't say that it's um, too much of a, a push um, beyond what NFD does or what, you know, features have, feature labels have brought to the, the community or to the Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, but it's definitely um, 
you know, bringing uh, an awareness to your your kind of your platform, your holistic platform capabilities versus the individual items um, all, that are um, prevalent today. So with that, um, I'd like to say uh, thank you to the audience for attending the talk today. And uh, we hope you enjoy it. And we hope to see you again in the, the next um, KubeCon. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll, we'll see you again maybe in KubeCon North America. Thanks.